This is the test equipment Hyatt. That's a general radio bandpass filter. Absolutely intense. I'm Heinbach. I'm an electronic music composer and write soundtracks. And I also talk on YouTube about all the kind of weird stuff that I do and that I like, which includes tape, test equipment, and going on deep dives into obsolete media and trying to make that music. I will always be interested in hardware because haptic feedback goes a long way. There's just a lot that happens when you turn a knob and you tend to make music in tinier increments, like you tend to focus more on the minimal and less on the maximal. It's so easy to overdo anything in digital. And there it definitely helps to be limited in that regard or to just to have such an amount of fine control that it feels like you're taking a lens to the sound, a microscope, and you're moving in so close. And then you discover the sound that you always wanted to hear. Hello there, dear viewer, and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jakob Hack. I'm 42, and in those 42 years, I've met a lot of interesting people. And sometimes you meet a person who is so inspiring that you just want to drop everything that you're doing in the way that you're doing it and just start doing what they're doing in the way that they're doing it. Well, Heinbach is such a person, super inspiring, super nerdy, and if you want to know why, then just keep on watching. You're in for a ride. So obviously this video is going to be about Fundamental, an app made by Heinbach and Sonic Lab, and also about Heinbach, the man himself. Now, to really understand what Fundamental is and why it is like it is, you have to understand Heinbach and the way that he does stuff. And that's why I'm making this video. Now, even though my Hack Attack tutorials contain tutorial bits, I'm not gonna do the most in-depth tutorial, but I will point stuff out as we go along in this video. I really, really wanna focus on Heinbach and the way that he does stuff. <laughs> Fundamental came out, I was a bit confused, you might say. And so when I talked to Heinbach, I basically asked him for an elevator pitch because those are usually designed to, you know, explain what something is right away um, and try to drag you into whatever you're selling. Well, this is what Heinbach said. I messed up my first elevator pitch that was important and that was with Peter Kern from Create Digital Music. He's a great guy, great important uh, yeah, figure and one for reviews and I pitched him what it was and my pitch was so bad, I bombed so badly that I could see like his face becoming disinterested. <laughs> and <laughs> he tried it out, he was very happy, he wrote a good review, it's, he realized the power of it and what it can do and he was really enthusiastic about it but not from my initial pitch. Now, for me, fundamental is as if you're time traveling back to the 1950s and you're looking Karl-Heinz Stockhausen over the shoulder and you can grab all the stuff that he has there, take it with you back in time and play part of that beautiful, gigantic studio while sitting on your couch and so forth. Now, the first time I opened up Fundamental, I couldn't get it to make any sounds. And then I saw this button here named Trigger. Now, I've built a lot of analog synthesizers in the past, and many of them didn't have any keyboard support or anything like that. You basically just had to trigger them. And that's exactly what this thing is here. So if we press Trigger, we're going to get sound out of it. Now, next to it, you have envelope controls, and it has several modes. You can switch between the different modes from this box, so linear, exponential, logarithmic, and quite recently, Sonic Lab updated this thing with a exponential curve too. 
Now under that box, we have different play modes. And the one that I like using the most is the one right at the bottom because it basically makes, uh, well, it plays through the envelope like a pendulum. So back and forth. Now under that, you have a random generator and I do suggest you experiment with this. And there is one more thing, because if we press in this area here, we can actually set how long the envelope should be. And you can have the envelope be up to 15 seconds. Now, Fundamental is not your most straightforward synthesizer because it's not really a synthesizer. It's a test equipment app. What does that mean? Well, the term test equipment music is something that came up a lot when I was interviewing Heinbach. And so I, of course, had to ask him, what is test equipment music and what is it like making test equipment music? Think of the 1950s, think of Bakelite knobs, think of huge knobs that you have to grab with your whole hand and when you turn it, your wrist starts to hurt after some time. Like when I used the one sign oscillator that's navy green, so looks very military, is 25 kilograms and that one knob when I sampled that and just moved the tiny increments, my wrist was hurting so bad because this stuff was meant to, yeah, to last. It was made to withstand like, I don't know, a bombardment. And it would do just one job, do the best possible sign with the technology at the time. So you could run it through a telephone line and see how much of that super good sign is still happening after it's passed through the telephone line. That would be one purpose of how these were used. And there's other stuff that I use that comes from nuclear research. Uh, I've got a nuclear instrumentation modular one or two that are used to listen to the really tiniest variations in a whole lot of noise. So they're super aggressive amplifiers with tight bandpass filters that will filter out these tiny fluctuations so they can measure particles. The great thing is, it is in the audible range. Measure this stuff, it can go beyond, it can go to microwave, it can go low, it goes to crazy sound regions and you always get all these artifacts around them, uh, especially now with the components failing and getting older and aging. I would call it character. <laughs> but uh, the crazy thing about all that is, you can use it for music if you know how. And usually that means just turning it on, upping the volume really slowly, so it doesn't fry all the gear behind it because these things can sometimes put out 60 volts because they were meant to drive motors and stuff like that. So you have to be really careful and then you hear a tone and the tone goes and it's the most gorgeous oscillation you've ever heard. You're like, why doesn't my Eurex sound like this? Why doesn't my synthesizer, why doesn't my Moog sound like this? It sounds very different because it was purpose built for a different idea. I talked with Hans Kulk uh, of Willem Twe about it and he got into the whole thing because synthesizers sounded too synthesizerish. <laughs> and that's an interesting notion. Synthesizers sound very much already like instruments. They are tuned by someone to often be almost like replications of acoustic instruments. That's what all the patches on the early synthesizers are all about. Make the perfect flute and stuff like that. Test equipment never wanted to be anything else but a perfect sign, perfect square, perfect saw. So it sounds pure. And these pure sounds with all their imperfections, because they were as pure as you could get them at the time, are different and they have a richness that I don't find anywhere in modern equipment.
Now, while I was listening to Heinbach explain what it means to make test equipment music, well, I was thinking about cables a lot. Because I use a lot of external gear over here, like Volkas, Pocket Operators, Unosynth, MC101, and all of these ones, they basically have kind of the same cable connections. But what does that mean for someone using obsolete test equipment gear? Banana patch cables, Euro patch cables, USB patch cables, BNC patch cables, BNC to RCA, BNC to jack, mini jack to large jack, mono and mini jack to large jack stereo, BNC to banana cables, DC to jack cables, crocodile cables, because now I've got the Pulsar 23, which uses crocodiles, XLR to different genders of XLR cables to different genders of XLR cables. Then you go into old German broadcast gear where you use Großtuchel and Kleintuchel. These are very expensive adapters, like my tape machine. 150 euro for a set of cables. Oh, and then my most glorious cables are octal cables, like tube socket cables. And these power a set of vacuum tube oscillators. And I had to import these from Nebraska. And when I got them here, they smelled like a grandfather's shed. And the whole room suddenly smelled like a grandfather's shed. A lovely smell. But they took up the smell from where they were stored, probably probably in a shed. But it was the only place where I could get these cables because those are a nightmare to wire because they are eight point to point wires plus a ground. That was wild stuff. A really quick overview section here. So we have individual frequency controls for the eight different oscillators up here. And we can see all of their frequencies in this big thing over here. Now on the right side, we have a set of mixer controls basically. So we can control oscillator gain, V-boost, which is like an amplifier for each oscillator. So you can even mess with volume more if you want. Then we also have a page for fine tuning and then a page for panning. And that's pretty much it. Now, there are a set of controls on the left side, and these are all modulation controls, basically where you set up the signal strength for the modulation section down here. So for the page of uh, gain modulation, well, you have the gain modulation controls right here. Frequency modulation page, well, you have those controls over here. And lastly, pan modulation page, well, you have the panning modulation down here. Now there is one set of controls over here called H ratio and right now it's grayed out and that's because we are not running fundamental in a harmonic mode. But I'll show you how you can set fundamental to the harmonic mode and you do that over here in layout. We press this box and we go from user to harmonic. And as soon as we do that, we can see that H ratio in the modulation section now lights up in white like all of the other options here. And we can now use this to modulate the frequencies further. Oh, by the way, you can spread the ratio of the harmonics with this control over here. Now, there are a few more sections here and there are also some other stuff I want to point out, but we'll do that later on. Now somehow Heinbach went from this to this and I mean that transition is interesting because these are two worlds so far apart. Test equipment and iOS apps and a touch screen. Since last year and I got it with the ex explicit purpose to replace my OP1. Because my OP1 at that time which I had for like eight years was falling apart and I kind of needed a more reliable replacement. 
thought the iPad is cool. And then I found stuff by Audio Damage, Audio Damage Quanta, which had MPE control. I was like, ah, this is very good. This can replace so much because I love playing stuff with, yeah, where you can morph the notes. So I started uh, using that and I played that live. And that was my start into using the iPad. Immediately after I got it, I used it live, I think, in Rotterdam. I think that was a show that I did there. Then I slowly bought more stuff, like I bought ARM and tried to see what I can do with that. And I worked my way up through like some apps. I got all the audio damage stuff now. And from then on, it was kind of like the way that's cool, but there's stuff that I need. And stuff that I need is usually, uh, it weighs 25 kilograms and only does a sign. So it's not handy to take with me on the road. So I wanted to have something like that in portable. And when Sonic Lab contacted me to work on something, they wanted to work on an oscillator, I said, I've got an idea. So I took one of my old oscillators from 1950s, just sounds gorgeous, but are too unwieldy and said, we, are good. we can use this and then make eight of them. Now, Fundamental was made by two people, Sinon of Sonic Lab and Heinbach. Now, we already know who Heinbach is, but who is this guy Sinon and what does he do? Oh, he's Sonic Lab. He makes beautiful plugins that are very much geared to experimental music. I think his flagship product is the Cosmos, which is a crazy granular synthesizer. And when you see it, it's like, what is going on? But then you realize what you can do. And he has all these things that are specially designed also for the experimental academic market. He makes plugins that are very much used by academia, by film scoring people, by anyone looking to the far out reaches of uh, plugins. Now, before we move on, I want to do a big shout out to Jean-Baptiste of Music Hackspace because he gave me permission to use part of the interview he did with Sinan Buxoy for the Music Hackspace YouTube channel. They also do have a website and I actually had to go to Discord uh, to try to find this Jean-Baptiste. And it turns out that he's the guy that runs that entire Discord channel. So yeah, I was really happy to hear from him and him giving me permission to use the footage. So I've put a link to their webpage and also to the YouTube channel down in the description. And you know, a fun fact, it turns out that Jean-Baptiste and Sinon are friends because they did study together. I wanted to hear more about the actual development process of Fundamental. I basically thought this could be an instrument not playable with the keyboard, but playable via dials or maybe MPE or something. And then Dinan said, oh, this sounds like a good idea. And then he added all his ideas to that. His ideas on stochastic modulations, which are based on Xenakis and that where his ideas came in. And then he started the coding and creating the interface and everything. I sampled the unit deeply and he did machine learning and created wavetables to really accurately model the sound. There were many decisions we had to make. For example, at some point it becomes impossible to get the higher frequencies without aliasing. So we had to move from the wavetables to a mathematical sign. And where that cutoff was, that was a bit of back and forth trying that out. That was basically my input, consulting on the final sound of that 
then and the final look and the final feel and creating presets that would grab people immediately and then helping with the promotion and getting this out. He would do all the tech work. Okay, so real quickly. Now, Fundamental has been designed to be played with an MPE controller. But when you get into this with an MPE controller, you have to kind of forget everything that you know about playing a synthesizer. Well, not everything. What am I trying to say? Well, on a regular synthesizer, when you're playing a keyboard, then if you're playing a melody, the synthesizer will respond by playing a melody in the keys that you've played them, right? Well, that is not what Fundamental does, and that is not what Heinbach and Sinan wanted you to do either. So when we look at the MPE controls that we can find down here that you can set up, then we can see that we can set up stuff for the pressure, for the y-axis and the x-axis, so glide and slide basically. And what we have are four sources. So we can set up sources for the gain and gain modulation, and also frequency and frequency modulation. Now, on top of that, you can also set a fundamental to play in a certain scale, and you can also set the range for the uh, glide and pitch bend. Now, when it comes to MPE controllers, there is this one controller that is supposed to work really well with fundamental, and it is none other than the Sensel Morph and the Buckla Overlay. Now, if you want to use that, there is this preset that you have to download and load up into the Sensel Morph. And as soon as you've done that, then that one has been mapped out for use with Fundamental. And there is even an MPE preset in here that has already been set for this controller and this overlay. Now, as you might have picked up earlier, Heinbach did mention that he has been using iOS professionally or in his profession while scoring stuff in a theater or, you know, on stage. And I wanted him to talk a little bit more about that because I found that really interesting. I had a theater production. It went to premiere and the only music tool that I brought with me was the iPad. So I brought the iPad, I brought Fundamental, I brought a few of the audio damage plugins. And whenever there was a scene I needed to score, I used the iPad and that worked just great. So and I felt so happy to not lug around my, yeah, MacBook Pro 16 inch with me. It weighs a ton and is big and drains the battery like nothing else. Just have the iPad and then play um, two instances of Fundamental, some Brambo stuff and then done. The coolest thing was because the, the head of the sound department at the theater, it's Hans Otto in um, Potsdam, he's such an iOS nerd also. And he also had fundamental, he had a lot of apps, he, had, he showed me stuff on Sampler, he showed me all these super cool apps. And he had it so that he could just like, I could just airdrop it to their server. Immediately they had the sound. I didn't have to exchange any thumb drives. I didn't have to do anything like that. It was really easy. It was really fun and musical. And that was the first time I only used the iPad to do additional scoring. The main scoring happened with three two meter high statues of, <laughs> of test equipment, a massive tape machine and a piano. But all the additional stuff, like moods or uh, what was needed, that I did with the iPad. Now, stochastics is something I've heard a lot about when talking to developers. And Heinbach mentioned that term a lot when talking about fundamental and the modulation section in fundamental. But I, I really don't know what stochastics means. And it turns out neither does <laughs> Heinbach. The lower part of fundamental is this modulation section, which is, I mean, I can only describe it as hardcore maths that you can feel in music. And I honestly, I don't know what, what they mean because these are very, they're very much, uh, these, are, these are terms from mathematics, stochastics, and I don't know what Bernoulli did, who he is, who he was, or if it's just the name of a function, 
but I know Bernoulli sounds very good when it's used on uh, volume automation. I'm still looking forward to at some point going to like a dinner party and then there's a mathematician and then I can chat to him uh, or her about uh, stochastics. And then I'll tell them, yeah, I really like the feeling of Bernoulli. And I hope they will go, yeah, I do too. <laughs> you know, the whole interview with Heinbach was this lovely. He's such a good conversationalist. Conversa conversa if you ever get the chance of meeting Heinbach in real life after everything crazy going on in the world right now has ended, do that because it's just amazing to talk to. Stochastic modulation options. Where can we find them? Well, in the modulation section. And the gain, frequency pan, and H ratio, they all have the same types of options. And you can find them in these three symbols here. So if we select the first one and then press the name, a new list pops out where we can find waveforms such as triangle sign, sawtooth, and on and on. If we jump out of here and select this symbol or icon instead, press the name, we have a new list with uniform, Gaussian, and words I can't even pronounce. Well, if you want to know why Bernoulli feels so good, well, you just have to go to this icon or symbol, press the name, and here you can find geometric, Pascal, by nominal Poisson and Bernoulli himself. Now I wanted to round up the interview by asking Heinbach about other apps that he might be using for music making on iOS. And uh, you've already heard about a few like uh, audio damage stuff and also AUM, you know, obviously. But there is this one app that he mentioned, which is, it's not a synth, it's a function generator. And it's an app that I like too, not only because it's made by one of my patrons and you're an awesome patron, but because of how uh, clean and function generatory it is. Is it Augen X? I, I made whole tracks with just that because it's like test equipment in its purity. And I love it because it, it sounds very pure and punchy and powerful. It doesn't sound like a synthesizer. So you can do this kind of pan-sonic and like being analyzed by robots kind of sounds, which I really like. So I think I made three tracks with it, even posted one on my Instagram. And I really enjoy the purity of working with it because it is like I'm working here with the real life things in a way. And then of course, if you run it into ARM, it becomes so much more because you can yeah, add effects and then suddenly, whoa, this is not just a pure function generator anymore. Thank you so much, Heimbach, for doing this interview. You are such a lovely and inspiring person. I had a lot of fun exploring making music with function generators, uh, which is something I haven't done in a very, very long time, you know? So thank you for that. I also want to say thank you for letting me steal so much of your content. Everyone, I gotta say, <laughs> making this video has been easier when it comes to finding B-roll and stock footage because Heinbach has so much content and every video he makes looks absolutely amazing. It's kind of hard making a video that looks bad when your studio looks like this. This, this is gold. So thank you, Heinbach. Now, before you leave, why don't you hit me with a thumbs up because that really helps here on YouTube. And if you want to go get Fundamental or any of the other apps we've talked about in this episode, well, they're all linked down below where you can also find a link to my Instagram. I post stuff there that I do not post anywhere else. And if you're following me there, tag me whenever you're doing something musical. It doesn't have to be apps, it can be test equipment, or it can be a new piece of hardware, like the Novation Circuit, if you are getting that one. I know it's not really out yet, but yeah. And then also there's a link to my Discord server. And if you are interested in seeing me live stream and hanging out with me, well, then you can go to youtube.com slash live. I only do live streams there and it's basically a place for me and you to hang out and discuss topics related to music or ADHD like we did in the last stream. <laughs> Now, if you want to support the work I do on the channel, apart from a thumbs up, well, you can also share this video, of course. And then if you want to support me in a financial way, you've got the links here on the side. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. As usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it.